Welcome to the video exercise of designing counters in VSDL. This is Muhammad Amir Yusuf. The agenda of the day is we will start by defining the counters and then try to understand their working and their construction using an example of simple 3 bit counter. Then we will analyze it as a state machine and further proceed to its behavior mapping and finally come out with logical design expressions for 3 bit counters. Later, we will describe the counter in VHDL by their structure and also by their behavior. Now, let us start with definition of counters. A counter is a device that counts the number of events at its input. Let us start with simple 3 bit binary counter. It starts from 0, and when it finds the first event at its input, it gets incremented by 1. The second event makes the output binary 010, that is 2 in decimal. The third input event results binary 011 at the output. Similarly, it increments by 1 at every input until its maximum value 111 is reached. And then it cycles to 000 with any further input. Another important thing to note that there is always a different output generated by the device for same input. It means that the output is not dependent on the inputs only. Instead, it also depends on what was the previous output of the counter. As the output is incrementing every time, so the device is making use of previous output to get a new output. In other words, the next output is calculated by using the current output of the device. This behavior is a contrast to a class of digital circuit where output is a pure function of only the present input. Such circuits are called combinational circuit. Whereas a circuit in digital electronics where next output is determined based on the current state of the circuit in addition to the input is called sequential circuit. A sequential circuit is best described as a state machine. Our 3-bit counter has 8 unique outputs, so we can describe it as a state machine having 8 unique states starting from S0 and going up to S7. This state machine can predict the next state at every current state, then at incoming input, the counter can move to the next predicted state. This 3-bit counter state machine start with state S0 with output 000 and move to state S1 with output 001 when it first find when it find first input event. At the second input event it, it moves to state S2 with output 010 and so on until it reaches the final state S7. If it find a further input at state S7, the counter will roll over to state S0. Now let us design this counter in hardware. The first step is to map the behavior of counter as state machine in a truth table. As state machine has depicted in previous slide, it starts in state S0 and next predicted state S1. With an input event, it moves to S1 which becomes its new current state and S2 its new next state. Similarly, it will cycle through all the eight states. As we already have established that, the counter actually uses its current state for calculating its next state. So we must have some memory element in its hardware design that holds the current state as an input for module responsible for calculating next state. Three flip-flops are used for this purpose. I mean to hold the current state value. This value appears at the outputs of flip-flops Q0, Q1, and Q2 and act as input to next state calculating module. Remember that the same current state value are actually the output of counter also. Now we come to the most important part of counter design. We talked about next state calculating modules in previous slide. Yes, next state calculating modules are actually combinational circuits whose outputs are purely dependent on their inputs. They take Q0, Q1, and Q2 as their respective inputs, determine the next state, 
and make them available at their outputs, which are directly connected to the inputs of flip-flops D0, D1 and D2. Now we need to design these next state calculating modules. For that, take a look back at the truth table. We have mapped their behavior already. With the help of these behavior maps, we can drive logical expressions for them. At this stage, we have well understood the device functionality, its inputs and outputs, its internal construction, and its working against the inputs. Now it is time to pick up the tool and implement it in hardware. We are using VHDL as a tool and the next part we will see how we can make this device in VHDL in many different ways. The first VHDL design is about the implementation of counter with structural description using the logical equations we obtained from KMAP. First we describe the port of counter with a single bit event input well, we are using rising edge of clock as an input event, so this counter will count the rising edges of clock coming at its input. Then we have 3-bit output Q that will give the count value. An input signal clear is added in the design that allow the counter to reset whenever it is high. Two signals, each of which 3-bit D and QS are defined for internal connections. Note that the logical equations obtained from KMAP for determining the next state are implemented in this design. After that, a VHDL process is implementing the flip-flop that make the assignment of D to QS conditional with the rising edge of clock. Remember that D is carrying the next output of the counter. The process is also monitoring that if clear signal get high, the signal QS should be reset to zero. The internal signal QS is directly hardwired with output signal Q. The second design is description of counter by its behavior. In this method, we are actually enjoying the real advantage of using VHDL that allows us to design hardware module by just describing their behavior. Well, according to set standards of VHDL. Port is described exactly as it was in previous example. A 3-bit internal signal count is also described to carry the count of counter. A VHDL process is making sure that whenever there is high on clear signal, the count value should be clear to zero. But when the clear is not high and there is an event at clock and the rising edge of clock is observed, then increment the signal count by one. Note that we are not implementing any logical equation from KMAP in behavioral description. That means that we don't need to go back to all that behavior mapping and logical expression derivations if we ever need to make a bigger size counter. The size can be easily modified by just modifying the width of output signal Q and internal signal count. The third method is an example of generic size counters where the size can be altered with significant ease by just changing the value of n. So this was the exercise for designing counters in VSTL. Thank you for listening.